What's up, Alabama fans? Producer Chris here to break down this Alabama versus Ole Miss matchup. Alabama wins it 24 to 10 in a game that I don't know if it could be summed up any other way than an emotional roller coaster. Alabama down six to seven early, three to seven, you know, pretty earlier than that. Um, a game where Alabama really, really, really had to test their will as a team. How hard are they going to be as a team? Are they going to roll over and just be soft all year long? Um, I think that was answered in this game. Now, there are a lot of good and a lot of bad from this game. I'm going to talk about both of them here. So stick with me because... I do believe there was a specific incident in this game that changed all of the emotion for Alabama. Um, so we're going to talk about the bad first, just because I want to get that off my chest. Seth McLaughlin in the first half. Dude, what are we doing, man? How many bad snaps is this so far in the season for Seth McLaughlin? It's... First and goal at the one after that blocked punt, an amazing punt block by Ja'Cory Brooks down in Ole Miss's own end. You know, we got a first and goal at the one. First play, a bad, another bad snap by Seth McLaughlin. It killed the entire, it, any any kind of chance for a touchdown on that on that drive. You know, we ended up, Will Riker nailed a field goal. You know, thank God we have him. Um, you know, up until that point, I was thinking that's Will Riker's our offensive MVP, MVP for the entire season so far. Um, but one thing that was really weird about that play too was why the hell are we in the shotgun? From first and goal from the one, we're in the shotgun on that play. Now that that's really weird to me. Um, I'm going to link this all in for offensive line play as well. Offensive line, I didn't think played terrible overall. Um, the first half, we started off pretty strong the first drive, running the football. You know, I Tommy Reese so far has done this where that first drive, we'll, we'll run it down their throats. And then we get away from the run for some reason. I don't really know why that has happened so far in the first four games of this season, but it has. And it's been evident every single time that we'll, we'll run it a few really, really good runs on the first drive, and then we just stop running the ball. I, I don't know why that happens. Um, it needs to stop happening. I'll tell you that. I don't care if we run the ball 70 times a game. We need to keep running the ball. Because when we do, we are, we're, we're getting yards when we're running the ball. I don't know why we're really stopping, but... It is what it is. Let me know in the comments section right now. Grade the offensive lines play. I think this is probably their best game of the year so far. Um, you know, it wasn't perfect. We gave up a couple of sacks. But it was better than what we've seen so far. So let me know in the comments section. Grade the offensive lines performance A, B, C, D, or F in the comments section right now. Now, Jalen Milrow. Let's get into him real quick. There was some good. There was some bad from him. First half, super indecisive. You know, he was going to his first read. If it wasn't open, he was taken off. And I don't hate that um, just because I keep preaching we need to let Jalen Milrow be what he is, not what we hope he is. And, you know, in the, the first drive, he had two carries for 39 yards. One was on a big third down run. One was 20 yards and one was 19 yards, I believe. And then we just stopped running the ball after that. It was weird. Jalen Milrow, 39 yards on two carries in the first on the first drive of the game. After that, Alabama ended the first half with 22 rushing yards. That ties into what I'm talking about with Tommy Reese. Why we get away from the run? I... I don't know, but it is, you know, that that just is what it is right now. We've been getting away from the run. We need to stop that. Now Jalen Milrow ended the game 27 for or excuse me, 17 for 21, 225 yards, 
one touchdown, one interception. He also had 28 rushing yards on the game. Now, like I said, he had 39 yards on the first drive rushing the ball. A lot of that came with sacks. Um, you know, that that's the offensive line play we're getting right now. It's better than it has been, but still, you know, that that's what we got. So Jalen Milrow, I think, in the second half, like I was telling you earlier, there was a pivotal play in the game. That deep ball to Jalen Hale for his first touchdown of his college career. Let's shout him out for that. Jalen Hale in the comments section. Um, <laughs> Milrow got hit on that deep ball touchdown and went down like he was injured. And, you know, maybe he got the wind knocked out of him. I don't know. But the way he got up, and the way he just celebrated, went crazy when he got up. He, he shot up. He was down for a minute. And then he shot up and started celebrating. I think that fired this Alabama team up. Because after that, we started playing like an Alabama team of old. And why that? You know, that was his Jake Coker moment. If, if there's going to be one, that was his Jake Coker moment. You remember when Coker trucked that old Miss player and it really fired guys up? We lost that game. But it fired guys up. We ended up winning the national championship at the end of the year. To me, if there has been a Jake Coker moment for Jalen Milrow so far, that was it. That was it. So let me know in the comments section what you guys think was that fake injury by Jalen Milrow after that long touchdown pass. Um, did that spark Alabama as a team as a whole? Type Y for yes, N for no in the comments section. Let me know what you guys think. That's what I thought, you know, right after that, Jam Miller, um, you know, he got thrown out of the game for targeting, which the way the rule is written, it's targeting, you know, I don't like it. It's not a defense. I think if it's not a defenseless player, there should be no targeting there. But if you use the crown of your helmet from head to toe, it's targeting. That is what it is, whatever. Um, you know, that hit came right after that touchdown uh, pass by Jalen Milrow. And to me, Alabama played like a completely different team than we've seen all season after that play. So that's what I think for that, um, for Jalen Milrow's performance. It, can we talk about the defense real quick? Alabama's defense is legit. I don't know how much more you can ask for. Ole Miss was averaging. Now, I know they really haven't played anybody so far this season, but Ole Miss's offense was averaging 55 points per game. They're averaging 17, I believe they showed on the broadcast in the fourth quarter. Ole Miss's offense has played insane so far this season. Um, you know, Alabama's defense pr has looked good. You know, the Texas game, Quinn Ewers is a good quarterback. Sark is an amazing offensive coordinator. Obviously, he's the head coach, but he's calling the plays. You know, he's going to get his in that game. Alabama's defense today played amazing. They had... Two, three, four, five sacks in this game. Two from Dallas Turner on the stat broadcast that I'm looking at right now. They, they, they finally have been able to get a little bit of pressure on the quarterback. Now, that mostly came in the second half. First half, we were still seeing, you know, those first couple Ole Miss drives. We were like, my God. I don't know about you, but I was like, dude, just another game. Another game of not getting any pressure on the quarterback. But they started getting that pressure. They started playing really well. Kool-Aid McKinstry, Tyrion Arnold having unbelievable seasons. The stats that we see right now, Tyrion Arnold, two pass breakups in the game, eight total tackles, um, an interception. You know, he's having, he's having an unbelievable season after last year where he was kind of up and down, especially, you know, a, a few games he got absolutely torched last year. He's having a breakout season. Malachi Moore, let's not overlook him. Having a breakout season. Only had six tackles on the day, one tackle for a loss. 
one QB hurry that we're seeing right now on the stat sheet. But what he's bringing to the table is a lot of lot a lot of energy for this defense. Um, Kool Aid McKinstry, I mean, he's doing his thing. He's doing his thing, locking guys down. Um, I don't know how many times they threw to him today. Not very many. Um, you got what Kool Aid is today. Just overall, overall, really, really good. Um, Alabama's defense, I don't, I don't think you could really ask for more from, you know, they're going against Lane Kiffin in an offense that has been good. They've been really, really good this year. And Alabama held them to 10 points. That's really good. So let me know in the comments section, rate your confidence level in the Alabama defense. Scale it 1 to 10 for me in the comment section. You know, I think I think so far there was some good, there was some bad. I would probably give them a seven. There's more that you can work on. Obviously, Nick Saban says that all the time. But I don't think you could ask for any more from this Alabama defense. They held Jackson Dart in check. Oh my God. I just absolutely smacked my computer. <laughs> um but like I said, they held Jackson Dart in check. You know, 244 passing yards. He was 20 for 35. In today's age, that's not terrible. That's not terrible. We held them to 56 yards rushing. That's great. Ask for that every day or every game of the season. If you hold a team to 56 rushing yards, I'll be good with that. You know, they had 301 yards total on the game. You know, that kind of seems like a lot, but when they only have 10 points, you know, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. And they added on a few of those yards right there at the end of the game. Um, you know, when they had to go for it on fourth down, it was fourth and 23 or something like that. Um, and they ended, up, they ended up getting it, which I don't like. I really wish we would have been able to, you know, end it right there, but I mean, you can't ask for more. Ole Miss was three for 14 on third down, three for 14 on third down. You know, if if there's, there's pivotal times in games, third down is always one of them. And if you hold a team for three for 14 on third down, I can't ask for much more, you know, shaky first half for Alabama for sure. I was out here texting my friends in our group chat. Ty Simpson? Ty Simpson in the second half? No. Hypocrite me. Hypocrite Chris. You know, I'll, I'll take ownership of that. Um, you know, just good second half overall. Mainly mainly good third and a half. Cool, like that, that, that like six minute mark. Right after that, in my opinion, right after that faked injury by Jalen Milrow after he threw the touchdown pass to Jalen Hale, was really the turning point in this game up until, you know, where Ole Miss was driving at the end of the game. I didn't really like that. I wish we could have stopped them and ended the game there. You know, ultimately, turnover on downs. They didn't score again. You know, bend don't break. We'll take that at the end of the game. Um, But ultimately, a good win for Alabama in a game that everybody – was against them. So many people picked Ole Miss to win this game. I saw a lot of it. A lot of people picked Ole Miss to win this game. Alabama doesn't just win. They cover the seven-point spread. They win 24-10 in Bryant-Denny Stadium. We'll give them a rammer jammer. Roll Tide. Here we go. Alabama wins 24-10. The 3-1 and one on the season. And their first win in SEC play. Most importantly, roll tide, everybody. I'll see you next week. My name's Chris Daughtry.